Yo, what's good, YouTube? Welcome to episode number 14 of the Race to Division 1. In our previous episode, we won both of our games, played very well with our team. Not going to make any changes in this episode. Probably won't make changes until the next episode, guys. I'm enjoying playing with this team. It's overall just a solid team. A good attack, a good defense. PK has impressed me quite a bit this year. Obviously, we're only in Division 6 right now. We are two games from being promoted, and we still have a chance to win the title. We've won every single game except one of them. And we're going to dive right into the first game today, right away. And it's going to be against a 4-3-3 holding, which, as you guys know, has given me quite a bit of trouble this year. And he's got a lot of pace in his front three, so I was a little bit worried but here's the thing, he was one of those players who just sat back and tried to counterattack and try to do it with over-the-top through balls. This year, it's not as effective as it was last year, so you can stop players who just want to pace down and try to get over-the-top through balls. But we settled into this game nicely, 16 minutes in, we go for a step over, we fail the first time, get it right back, and then do it again! But Dava Louise with a Meta World Peace elbow right to Jekko's head, straight up takes him out, and we end up getting a penalty. And there's no one else to take this other than Jovetic with that 91 penalty. So why not? We're going to go straight down the middle. It seems like not a lot of people expect it this year as much as last year. So straight down the middle. His keeper goes to his right. And we end up scoring the first goal of the game. But a very poor pass here by PK. Give it right to my opponent. I get lucky. I get very lucky there. He had a very good opportunity to score, but another mistake on my end from the goal kick. He cuts off the pass right here, and he's going to find Sturridge making the run. Somehow, Sturridge maintains possession, and with his weak foot, he puts it in, and we are equalized. So I was just hitting myself in the head. Terrible, terrible mistake from the goal kick. I should have just given it to my right back. Instead, I tried to get the ball to Pedro. He cut it off beautifully. He ends up scoring, but... Can't let myself get down here. Got to get back to that attacking mentality. Eventually find Jovetic, who's as cool as the other side of the pillow. We go near post, and it just inches away from the keeper's hands into the back of the net. Jovetic is a phenomenal striker. One of my favorite this year. He plays so beautifully for me. You guys have noticed I've been taking a lot of near post shots after the finesse nerf and it seems to be working. So for those of you guys who are used to finessing still, try to go near post. It seems to be working well. A little bit lucky to maintain possession, but Ashley Young makes an overlapping run and a beautiful finish by the man. I know someone in the comment section a couple days ago, he was like, never put beautiful finish and Ashley Young in the same sentence. But hey, he's a phenomenal player on Ultimate Team. I can't complain about him. He scored a bunch of goals for me. 45th minute here. We get Jovetic on the run. My opponent gets in to break that up. Goes in for the tackle. Poor challenge. Kyle Walker gets a yellow card and then it freezes. Oh no. Please, EA, no, don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. Not in Division 6. Luckily, we end up getting the win. He actually ended up rage quitting. So five wins, zero draws, one loss so far into Division 6. Next win gets us promoted 100%. And then another couple of wins will get us the Division title. Go ahead and play a fitness card on my team. They definitely needed it. And this is probably going to be the last game I play with this team. You know, even though I had quite a bit of fun with them, I think it's time to you know, try some new, maybe a new league, maybe the Bundesliga like this guy, and the Bundesliga is so good this year, so many great players, lots of pacey players too, so you really have to be careful, and as you guys can see, both Jeff and Aubameyang are very, very pacey, very, very tough to stop, but he was also a high-pressure team-pressing defender, and you guys will come up against a lot of these as you move up in the division, so early on, right after kickoff here, we're going to do a great job passing around to make sure we don't give up possession, and eventually we're going to find that one player who's going to make the run, and that one player is going to be none other than Jovetic. Look at that cool and calm. We scored three minutes in as he kept team pressing, kept calling the second defender over, and he ended up just putting a hole in his defense. And that's why you can't keep doing that. But it was very hard to pass on him later on in the game. He really, really had me defensively locked down. I couldn't do anything. He was intercepting every pass. He was getting me on the counter. I had a lot of trouble this game, guys, and I get worried a little bit when uh, someone who's able to lock me down this effectively not really because of his defending, but mostly because of that team pressing. 
I have no clue how my opponent kept possession of this ball right here. I don't even think he knew what he's doing at this point, but somehow he ended up maintaining possession. Finally, we get it. We almost conceded at that point, as it seemed that Aubameyang was unmarked in the box. Luis Gustavo goes for a shot. It's right of the post. Things are still 1-0. Playing good defense, and our goalkeeper Mignole was playing exceptionally well this game. Definitely made sure we didn't concede with another great save, as you guys can see there. But here, EA decided to cheese me. I'm on the attack. I see... Pedro making a run and what happens the screen goes black are you serious EA is like out of all things the screen turned black on me so unlucky not to get that one and he maintains possession right back and gets a little bit of luck here gets it down the wings crosses it and another save by Mignole I mean the man is a beast he's just the Belgian beast the Belgian wall is sitting in the goal can't do anything against him another shot by Farfan right over the crossbar so we maintain the lead still going into the second half and uh then we're just gonna try to pass around here trying to find someone we find ashley young making that overlapping run he's just overlet a little bit and that's what i'm looking for this game i'm looking for my left mid and right mid to really get that overlapping run sacco with a terrible pass here terrible Leave it up to Mignole to get us out of that hole with a one-on-one -on -one save. Then we're going to get my opponent on the counter here. Three on three for the most part after he makes this weird error. And we find Checo make the run one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. And his keeper, Adler, makes a save. So two back-to-back one-on-one saves. But that's how this one is going to end. Just 1-0 with the man of the match being our keeper, Mignole. So I cannot complain. Definitely didn't play to my best of my ability. That high pressure, I had a lot of problem with it, and that worries me a little bit, guys. That worries me for the later division. So we'll see what happens. Our next win will give us the Division 6 title. We're for sure going to be in the Division 5 um, league or season next, so it should be, should be fun to see what kind of opponents we get. That's going to be it for this episode, guys. The team will be sold. We'll be building a brand new team in the next episode, so stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. It really, really helps me out. The channel's been growing greatly. You know, I'm very, very happy with the way the channel's been growing, so I do appreciate all of the support. One thing before I let you guys go, the trading video I made yesterday regarding investing in Real Madrid or Barcelona players... A lot of people have been freaking out because the prices went down rather than up. I will say, just give it until the El Clasico actually comes on TV, which is going to be tomorrow. So, um, it's Friday right now. Wait till tomorrow. Once the game's done, see what prices are going to be like, then sell them off. Even if they did go down, guys... Um the players I suggested for people to buy weren't even that expensive. Most of them went between 300 and 800 coins. So you shouldn't be losing as many coins as some people have been saying. You shouldn't be losing as many. Uh, because I, I mentioned, if you're going to buy expensive players, make sure that you only buy one of them, not multiple of them. So if you're going to buy someone like Benzema, only buy one. I know someone started spazzing out on me because he went and bought like 10 of them when in the video I specifically said do not buy more than one like Benzema or Isco or, or a player that's a little bit more expensive. But, you know, that's that's really all I have to say is just make sure uh, the, you watch the whole video before you actually make your investments. I feel like sometimes people watch part of the video and don't listen to everything I mention and then they start, you know, blaming me and start hating on me because they didn't listen to exactly what I said. So, you know, I can't really, I can't be held responsible if someone doesn't actually uh, view the whole video. But... In any case, guys, if you want to see daily FIFA content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I mean, what else are you going to do? Catch you guys all tomorrow. Later.